On the 20th of December 1987, in the Tabla Strait near the island of Marinduque in the Philippines, motor vessel Doña Paz was en route to the city of Manila with more than a full load of passengers, many of which were heading home to see their families for the holidays. With an official capacity of 1,518 passengers, it's believed she was actually carrying well over 4,000 when she collided with a petroleum tanker, carrying over a million liters of gasoline and petroleum products. What resulted would be the worst peacetime maritime disaster in history. Doña Paz started her life not in the Philippines, but in Japan. Built in 1963 by the Amanichi Zosen Company in a dockyard in Hiroshima, Japan. She was launched on April 25, 1963, as the Himayuri Maru. She was 2,324 tons, 93.1 meters or 305 feet in length, and 13.6 meters or 45 feet at the beam. She moved at a decent 18 knots, and during her time in Japan, she was rated for carrying 608 passengers. She had a successful career as a ferry vessel in Japan, until she was eventually purchased by the Philippine company Sulpicio Lines in 1975, and renamed motor vessel Don Sulpicio. It was around this time that her troubled life began. Refurbished or otherwise re-rated, she could now carry as much as 1,518 passengers. She started running the Tacloban to Catbalogan to Manila route. On the 5th of June, 1979, she was running from Manila to Cebu when a fire broke out on the ship. But rescuing vessels said the crew handled the situation admirably and professionally. Not a single one of the 1,164 passengers were lost. The Don Sulpicio, however, was deemed a constructive total loss. The ship was completely gutted by the flames left a burnt hulk, a grisly foreshadowing of its eventual fate. The wreck was towed into port, where it was expected to be torn apart for scrap. But surprisingly, Sulpicio Lines repurchased it and refurbished it, putting it back out to sea in 1981, this time under the new name motor vessel Doña Paz. Fast forward six years. It's late December 1987, a busy season for the ferry service. On the passenger manifest, 1,583 passengers are listed, already above maximum capacity. But it was common practice to sell unregistered tickets for the ship, far in excess of her capacity. Passengers were crammed into the 300-foot Doña Paz, survivors stating people were sleeping three or four to a cot, some even choosing to sleep on the floor in the passageways of the ship. But a bit of discomfort on the 22-hour trip from Tacloban Lighty to Manila would be well worth seeing their family for the holidays. The vessel departed at 0630 from Tacloban and was expected to arrive in Manila at 0400 the following morning. The attitude of the crew would be described as relaxed and even lackadaisical. They made this crossing a hundred so times a year. This one was no different. On the bridge was a single apprentice. The rest of the crew were below decks, drinking beer and watching TV. The captain was in his cabin, watching a movie on his new Betamax tape player. A report stated that the vessel had its last radio check-in at 2000, but subsequent investigations proved that that would have been quite impossible, seeing as the Doña Paz wasn't equipped with a marine band radio. Two hours later, motor tanker Vector, a 629-ton oil tanker, was southbound through the Tabla Strait. The 51.7 meter or 170 foot petroleum tanker was laden with a cargo of 8,800 barrels of gasoline and petroleum products, 1,050,000 liters of it. The smaller vessel was traveling from Bataan on the island of Luzon to the island of Masbata. It met the Doña Paz at Damali Point. At 22.30, well after sunset, the overladen ferry and the flammable tanker collided. Unfortunately, we may never know what happened on the bridges of the two vessels. What is known is no radio calls were made, the Doña Paz wasn't equipped with one, and the Vector never made a call. But all of the crew of the Doña Paz perished, and only two survived from the MT Vector, and both claimed to have been asleep below decks at the time. The large Doña Paz gouged a hole in the petroleum tanker, and almost immediately it burst into flames, quickly engulfing the small tanker. The hopes of fighting the fire were infinitesimally small. The gasoline spread through the water before surrounding the nearby ferry ship. The scene on board would have been a scene from hell. Jarred awake in the middle of the night, thousands of passengers awoke to a collision, followed quickly by an explosion. Many began to panic. Others searched out guidance from the crew, who were reported to also be running about in a panic. 
No orders were given, no efforts were made to fight the fire or abandon ship. The life rafts stacked on deck weren't deployed. The life vests for the passengers, if there even were enough for them on board, were locked up in their lockers. Passengers on deck would see the flames surrounding the ship and spreading to her decks, and would be left with a choice. Stay on the ship and be consumed by flames, or jump into the petroleum and flame-topped seas. In the water, oil and gasoline clung to survivors, choking and blinding them. People were forced to cling to luggage to remain afloat. Charred bodies bobbed eerily in the dark waters. The waters of the Tabla Strait were also well known for being homes for numerous sharks, though it's likely that the sound and flames would have kept them at bay. The scene was that of absolute chaos and death. A few nautical miles away, aboard the motor vessel Don Claudio, the crew spotted a massive glow that appeared to be an explosion and fire. They set off towards it immediately. They arrived on scene an hour later to find the two ships still burning, seeing many bodies in the water, but scant few moving. She lowered boarding nets and recovered just 25 people. All were burned to some degree. 25 people out of 4,000. The Philippine Coast Guard would not find out about the incident until 8 hours later, and not begin a search until another 8 hours after that. They would find only corpses after that. The Doña Paz had sank 2 hours after the collision, for the second time in its life being reduced to a burning hulk. The MT Vector slipped under 2 hours after that. The company that ran the ferry line, Sulpicio Lines, released a statement soon after, stating that 1,500 people had perished in the blaze. They were of course going off the crew manifest. But shortly after the incident, an anonymous official for the lines admitted that, during the busy holiday season, illegal tickets were sold for a cheaper rate. They of course would not be on the official manifest. On top of that, complimentary ticket holders and children under the age of four were not documented. In fact, of the 24 survivors from the Doña Paz, only five were listed on the official crew manifest, less than a quarter. As word spread, many began to grow concerned for loved ones that didn't show up in Manila when they were supposed to. Representative Raul Daza came out claiming that, based upon the numerous missing persons reports, that easily at least 2,000 passengers were not listed on the manifest. An investigation was launched from the Philippine National Bureau of Investigations conducting interviews with family claiming missing relatives. In February of 1988, they determined around 3,099 passengers and 59 crew had perished, totaling 3,134. It wouldn't be until January of 1999 that a presidential task force compiling all of the data would release the final butcher's bill. 4,385 perished from the Doña Paz factor. The determining factor? gross negligence. Despite a lack of training, senior personnel, survival equipment, and being heavily overloaded, the Doña Paz was not determined to be at fault here, but in fact the MT Vector, which was operating without a license, lookout, or even a master on board. The owners of the Vector were held by the Philippine Supreme Court to be liable, in order to indemnify the victims of the tragedy that they so negligently were responsible for. A tragedy that took over 4,000 lives the greatest peacetime maritime loss of life in history. While researching this topic, I stumbled upon numerous articles and videos titled The Titanic of Asia, or Asia's Titanic, which I can't help but feel is disingenuous and almost disrespectful to those who perished aboard Doña Paz. To compare it to something after so many died in such a horrible fashion. I'm not one to compare tragedies, but one must really place themselves in the shoes of the passengers aboard these vessels. Those aboard Titanic were awoken by the collision or by the crew, directed by the crew to don flotation devices and ordered into lifeboats as the situation worsened, ultimately taking two hours and 40 minutes for the ship to sink. There was confusion and fear, of course, and more than 1,500 perished from hypothermia, the effects of which I spoke about in a previous video. But now, consider the Doña Paz. Far from a luxury ocean liner, the passengers on Doña Paz were crammed in like sardines. Woken up by a crash and explosion, no one was there to guide them. There were no crew to help them, not even any safety equipment to don or lifeboats to load into. The ship may have taken hours to sink, but fire spread through it and around it in minutes. They were left with the horrible decision to burn to death, an excruciating way to die, or leap into the sea to face any number of other horrible deaths. Three times as many perished on the Doña Paz as the Titanic. 
In my mind, there is no comparison. To do so is to disrespect the memory of those that perished on the 20th of December in 1987. So if you're writing about this, making a video, or otherwise just remembering it, it's not Asia's Titanic. It's just the Dunya Pass, the worst peacetime maritime disaster in history.